This is a lecture preparation for August 2nd, the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today there are the two, the first reading, it's a little bit longer than normal, and the gospel reading a little bit normal than norm, longer than normal also. Uh, the common thing, one common thing about them is that there are, it's a, they're both stories and there are, there is a role of a narrator. So I, I would like for you to really shift your your um, speaking tone um, when you do go from narrator to the different people that are talking. And what you need to do is you need to uh, understand uh, there is a tone for the narrator. Uh, the, the narrator is interested. And so the narrator needs to uh, uh, in, include a, a tone, but uh, then... There is also there's more so there's a tone within those who are speaking, and you'll need to uh, read these readings and understand more what those tones are. Uh, so uh, I'm looking at the uh, the commentary at the bottom of the first reading, and um, it says at the bottom of the first paragraph. While Exodus, by the way, I'm on page uh, two twenty nine in the lecture prep book. While exit while exit while Exodus focused on physical food, John stresses bread for fullness of life in Christ given in the Lord's Supper. I'm going to read the entire next paragraph for you. The first reading presents the Israelite community recently recently delivered from an Egyptian bondage in the early stage of their long journey to freedom in Canaan. In a pattern repeated often in the scripture, they soon forget what God has already done for them and complain about their current hardship. They even have second thoughts about leaving a life of slavery, at least in Egypt. They had sufficient food and drink. Perhaps life was better than their present uncertainty and need. And then uh, through Moses, the Lord promises, promises to supply food and uh, added that he's going to trust the people's faith because he's only going to give them enough for each day. Um, so let's look at some of the, uh, the comments about the reading. So uh, at the on the left of the reading, as narrator... You want to suggest with disapproval the adolescent tone of those who grumbled. So it's something like the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, "I think you need to. You kind of need to express a little bit of, of how what weenies they were, uh, you know, uh, and how ungrateful they were. They're whining, as it says later on there. Uh, when you when." Well, then when you speak af after they've made their big complaint, realize again that you are the voice of God and you need to have a, a more, more of a certainty in your voice. And, um, um, and there sh it should be apparent. And when you go back and forth to the narrator, that should be apparent too. Now, um, uh, so when he when god says i have heard the grumbling of the israelites yeah, he asks a question there is god lavishing his goodness this goodness or granting it grudgingly in other words if he's, if he's is he saying i've heard the grumbling of the israelites that would be grudgingly uh, more out of his goodness he responds i have heard the grumbling of the israelites i, I don't know the right answer you can uh, but but make sure you have that inflected in some way um and uh, and when you speak of the quail, uh, you want you want to say it, uh, wishing that they had trusted more. In other words, if you had said, um, "In the morning a dew lay about the camp, and they were the day evaporated there on the surface of the desert were fine hoar flakes, like or like flakes like hoarfrost on the ground," it would be more like it's like more like this. In the morning, a dew lay on the camp, and when the dew evaporated there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes, like hoarfrost, on the ground. And then later on, there's on the next page, the, the Israelites ask this question, what is this? Um, so on seeing, on seeing it, the Israel ask, Israelites asked one another, what is this? I don't know if you want to say it that way, or what is this? Or what is this? Or what is this? I, I really don't know the right answer, but I'll let you, I want you to put something into that. Uh, but then Moses told them, this is the bread the Lord has given you. And that's a direct uh, uh, reflection to the gospel, 
which I'll look at now. The gospel is about the manna in the desert. And um, um, so at the beginning is kind of interesting. Before he gets into that, it talks about the, the crowd uh, uh, went across the, the lake to uh, Capernaum and, uh, and because they couldn't find Jesus and they and he was there and they said how, how did you get there well the answer not written here but it seems to be implied that he walked across the water that would have been the only way he could have gotten there so fast um, and um, and then he's they're all coming after him because he's he's worked some signs and he says he says amen amen I say to you you are looking for me not because you saw signs, because you have loaves and were filled. In other words, you guys didn't get it. Uh, don't do that. Work for food. Do not work for food that perishes. And he goes on. And then they say to him, they still don't get it. He goes, so what can we do to accomplish the works of the Lord? And Jesus said to them, this is the work of the Lord, that you believe in the one he sent. And then they, they get, even one more time, they say, what sign can you do that we might see and believe in you? And then they talk about the manna and the desert and all that. It's like, duh, you know, I, what did I do just yesterday? I, 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 I uh, multiplied bread from, from five loaves to feed 5,000 and two fishes. What do you, what do you want? You know, I mean, he's, I mean, I don't know that he's irritated, but what I'm trying to say is they didn't get it even after that. And again, again, he says, I, Amen, Amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but my Father. I mean, he's, he's still, he's not chastising them at all, but it's, it's, it's obviously they didn't get it. And he finally says, I am the bread of life. Okay, this is the deal. Um, okay, and uh, so I'm going to look, let's look at, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read those two readings uh, back to back right now. So I'll read to you the reading, this one. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you have led us into this desert to make this whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus, I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Now I'll go straight to the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we can see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Okay, now back in the middle. Sandwiched in between is our second reading, and this is the um, it is the uh, f- is it the fourth the fourth of seven from the book of uh, Ephesians and um, just previously he's talked about the unity of the church and then last week it was centered on one Christ one faith one baptism today he's talking about a changed way of life and um, now you need to understand that Ephesus was a very large port city. It was populated and visited by a great array of people who followed various gods and religions. Further, social stratification, daily violence, and a free and freewheeling sexual practices were common. It was a wild place. Um, but for the baptized who had learned about Christ and his life-giving death and resurrection, such attitudes and behavior must be put aside. At the time, baptism was a serious adult commitment for complete conversion of life, and Paul, Paul calls for nothing less. Unity and witness of the church were very, very much depends on the baptized members. Okay, before I read, I'll look at over to the left. Uh, there's a few things I want you to look at. He says that there's a certain, there's a sense of urgency in this reading. Uh, I think you would you want to keep that. Uh, some of the other readings are more about compassion and all that. This one is. I believe more urgent, and um, uh, and then uh, down towards the bottom, he uses the imagery of clothing oneself in the new in oneself in the new self, and that's kind of a baptismal theme. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth, as in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. You know, I just want to say as I finished reading that, that I wish I had practiced that one more time because I didn't really, uh, I didn't quite uh, pace it as I would now. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a couple of turns that he takes in there. P- please practice this one outside and, and understand because he kind of goes back and forth in, in what he's saying in... in uh, uh, so, so look at that closely. That's all for now. Um, I, I want to. I really want to listen for the changes in tone in your in your speech this uh, this Sunday. I want to, especially when you go from narrator, and then uh, I want to hear different tones coming up from the different groups, whether it's God, Jesus, the people, Moses. Uh, think about it and uh, see if you can make that happen. God bless. Bye.